Tom, good afternoon. You must be thrilled because this movie um, has got a lot of people very excited. We should say what it is. 45 years. That's right, obviously. Yes. No, I was just, sorry, I was filling in. I can't say I'm upset about it, can I? <laughs> Well, upset that people are talking about it. No, so I can't say that, because I'm not. No. Uh, it, <laughs> and it hasn't come out yet. So. Next week. And it comes out next week. So, yeah. tell it, so uh, Tom, give us the, the story. So uh, you and Charlotte Rampling, you're a Norfolk-based couple, and you're mm. leading up to your 45th yes, anniversary. Yes, it's a few days before they're celebrating their 45th anniversary. And she brings in the post, and it contains a letter from Switzerland, which he opens, and he finds out that he's girlfriend who was who died in the mountains because she fell 50 years before that her body has been found in the ice down there they can see it because presumably he has to go and look up some words in the german dictionary oh global warming that's what it means it's global warming of course and there she is down there and it's for him, it uh, brings back uh, his youth and, gosh, 50 years, there she is. What does he say? She looked like she did in 1962 and I look like this. <laughs> and it sort of uh, stops him in his tracks. And when he should be helping his wife Kate with uh, the preparations, he's just away up there in the mountains uh, with his beloved of 50 years ago and uh, it's rather inconvenient the timing and it, uh, the wife's sympathetic at first but she's more and more it seems to be affected by it it's as though she's come to life again as though they're haunted she's haunting them both anyway they get through to the to the, to the anniversary and he, he pulls himself together They've had their various ups and downs and tribulations and discussions and feelings about it, you know. Well, should we hear a, a clip from the film? What <clears throat> happens is that she doesn't realise at first just how significant this relationship may or may not be. And then she wonders why it is that he's been informed. And he tells her that the reason is because he is registered as the girl's next of kin. Why? Why what? Well, why were you her next of kin? Because they thought we were married. Who did? The authorities, people. What made them think that? We, we told them we were. You weren't, though? Oh, no, no, no. No, he hell no. We, we just had to pretend so that people would let us stay in their houses. Different in those days, Kate. And then, after the accident, well... Then... You're not lying to me. No, Kate. She wore a ring on her finger. It was a small wooden ring, like a curtain ring, made of oak. I need to remember that. It wasn't real. What I loved about that whole set, I mean, we're obviously not giving anything. This is the first five minutes of the first five minutes of the movie. Is this idea that this kind of bombshell has gone off mm. in their marriage, but it, it that, that it shouldn't matter because this is something that happened before they met, before your relationship yeah, that, started with Charlotte Rampling. Yeah, but the strange thing is, it shouldn't matter, <laughs> but it does. There's something about the power of the image of the girl down there. They can see her in the ice. There's something about that image that's. Is disturbing. That was pretty much the only thing uh, Andrew took from from the short story, which is really, really very very short, about ten pages. But it was that idea of the of the frozen young woman. The fact that she would she looks like she did in nineteen sixty two. Yeah, and, and, and I look like this. He said. <laughs> and what uh, then happens is that as as the importance of the relationship starts to be revealed, your character, the husband seems to withdraw into himself, he becomes secretive, he spends time in the attic looking for photographs, mm. and this apparently idyllic marriage that's leading up to this glorious celebration of 45 years, he didn't celebrate 40 because your character had been ill, mm -hmm. suddenly all these schisms, these fractures in their relationship yep. start to appear. Yeah. And that's that's basically the story, isn't it? That it's a and it's all with, with the tiniest gestures. They don't, it's not rows, it's not great revelations, it's all to do with everything being very yeah, understated. There's a lot of feeling, but it's uh, sort of quite deep down. Anyway, they do manage to make it to, to, the, to the celebration and, and uh, you know, they have a bit of a row. I mean, are you going to come? Are you going to go and 
Are you going to go there? Switzerland's what you say. I can't, I can't walk to the village without stopping to draw a breath. I'm not going to get up an effing mountain. <laughs> I wonder if um, um, we should talk about the way it's, uh, the way it's been directed, because you lo- you've always loved theatre, uh, Tom, and uh, you uh, have been involved in so many extraordinary performances. I just wonder if one of the tricks that uh, the young director, Andrew Haig, did was that he, he gave you space. And I wonder... I mean, we're talking about the end of the movie, but in the vaguest terms, when you're making your speech, oh yeah, it, that, that it, it was, felt, um, felt quite theatrical. And well, I was I was shown it before um, I saw the film because they wanted me to put on a few lines uh, off camera while, while the camera then moved to to Charlotte about the speech. In fact, he didn't use them. So Tristan, our producer, showed me the speech, and, and apart from a wide shot, very wide in which I was very emotional. I thought, oh, hell, I've used up all my emotion. Um, apart from that little clip, I mean, I just pick up the microphone and I say, uh, can you hear me? You know, well, i better talk sense then, you know. And then it moves in. But from then on, there are no cutaways. It's just me and my timing, my stopping because I'm upset or I make a little joke or carry on. And so that for once, there's no editing. Because then he was an editor, but then he said, well... This is your party piece, I suppose, and I was very touched when I saw that. I, 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 I can't um, say any other. But in fact, I mean, I'm surprised for much of the film, those key scenes, because it's almost a two-hander between you, you and Charlotte Rampling, and for much of the film, those key scenes do seem to play out without edits. We get single shots held for a long time. Yes, we he, get two he, shots of you know both actors yeah, together. Yeah, it's mostly. You did say it prefers two shots. Um, there won't be many close-ups. I speak a lot when I'm uh, off camera. It doesn't seem to, you know, seem to make any difference. <laughs> and from an actor's point of view... And sometimes we both of us got our back to the camera. It's just... Uh, but he has a very good eye and it just it makes it all seem very natural. I just want to make an, just an observation. The music is really important all the way through the movie. Mm. The, mm. Not just Charlotte Rampling playing the... Uh, Playing the piano beautifully with a creaky, with a fantastically creaky stool, but the music that is being chosen for your dance together, mm. the music that is being chosen, like the playlist to, to be played, it's it's, a, it's it, yeah. beautiful. Well, that and we did that last dance. Andrew said yesterday about ten times. I said you can double that, Andrew, because I remember at least we went up to twenty takes, and um, I think it may have been twenty-one <laughs> before he was satisfied. But the strange thing is, my feet were aching. But uh, my eyes moistened every time, and I think that's the power of the music and the story, and he feels he's got through his crisis and now he knows he loves her. And, There's also a scene uh, quite early on when you're not quite sure what's happened, and he is telling his wife for the first time he's describing the event, and he says that, um, that his girlfriend walked on ahead and she walked on ahead with a guide that he found yeah, yeah, yeah. annoying. And, um, and there's a suggestion, they, then they go round about and he doesn't see her. And there's a suggestion that maybe something strange happened. And then the, the choice of music is, oddly enough, Stagger Lee, which is the story of two men having, uh, an, having an argument. Oh, well, and, and, after that. Exactly. Well, that bit of writing is from of Andrew's imagining that his account of her death. Yeah. I thought it was wonderful. I know where he got it from. I can't think. Because they picked up a guide who spoke German, as she did, and so he felt excluded and they were making jokes. She was flirting with the guide. And they go round the corner and he says, and the last thing but one that I heard was her laughter. And Christ, did it, I don't know, he says, annoy me, upset me. But then there was a scream. And he says, that's that putting in of the last thing but one. And then the last thing, she's gone. I mean, you think about it, you think, well, perhaps maybe he was better off without her. She was flirting with the guide already. I only thought that for the first time yesterday. But I thought that was wonderful writing. I love doing it. One of the one of the many charms of the film, uh, I think, is that it is it is a movie about ageing, but it's not about dementia. It's not no. a, it, it's not about <laughs> silly old people. No, got, but, it, no. but it is certainly about growing old and uh, an established relationship and regrets and. Mm. Yeah, well. Uh, you know, there are various things, about obviously if one works, one's going to be playing old people. But to have a sort of romantic old person and, and it be believed it's, uh, would be on my wildest dreams because I'm torn between the two of them. It's a young girl of 19 and my beloved wife. No, I, I, was, I think it's all right, yeah. 